today's World Insight. China's top diplomat on a neighborly tour to Tokyo and Seoul. What's on the agenda? And health QR codes going global with China leading the way as a safety measure for travel. How feasible? Here's our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. We begin today's show with a look at Chinese Foreign Minister and State Councillor Wang Yi's trip to Japan and South Korea. China's top diplomat is set to visit Tokyo and Seoul from Tuesday to Friday. It is the first visit by a high-ranking Chinese official since Yoshihide Suga became the Prime Minister. And it comes after China and Japan agreed to a first round of tariff cuts as part of RCEP regional trade deal. And later this week, Wang Yi will visit South Korea. So where is China's relation with the East Asian neighbors heading? The impact on the region? Let's loop in our panelists to talk about all the details. For more on Chinese Foreign Minister's visit to Japan and Korea, joining us in Beijing, Teng Jianquan, Director for the Center of Arms Control with China Institute of International Studies. In Seoul, Yun Zhang Lim, Associate Professor with the Division of International Studies and Director of the Office of International Affairs and Public Relations with Kongju National University. In Tokyo, last but not least, uh, Naoyuki Yoshino, Professor Emeritus from Keio University in Tokyo. Thank you so much for all of you joining us. Uh, first of all, uh, Professor Yoshino, it's good news that China and Japan are likely to have some new travel mechanism after months of uh, closing somewhat the border toward one another. Tell me more about it. Um, the corona pandemic has been spread it after Europe became very large and we are slow to stop visitors from Europe first. And then the Japanese pandemic has started to grow. And then uh, hopefully uh, it's coming down recently. So it is very important to have strict rule that we can start our exchange of people. And political visit is very important. The next is business visit and academic scholars, students, general public. So we should set up a very nice rule and so that it can be implemented much further. I think the personal connections and dialogues, talks are very important uh, face to face that will tell to the general public in Japan. Yeah, uh, Professor, of course, uh, we already heard about the new arrangement uh, between China and Japan regarding business travelers. Tell me more about how this would work. I think the business activities are very important to look at the factories and staffs and so on. Remote uh, suggestions, remote uh, announcement is not well, especially in manufacturing industries. So I think the face-to-face -face visit will improve our business relations, that is first. Secondly, financial businesses and services sector is also related to the looking at the factories and the places that the businesses are going on. Without those face-to-face -face and via reviews, businesses are very difficult. Mm. So I think this movement will be a very good first step. So tell me more uh, about how it works. I think that uh, currently we should stay in the test in the airport, and that is a very nice way to check it. And also the business activities will become much more fluent and that will be the second step. So it is make sure that the current test is enough to protect our uh, COVID spread in both countries. Mm. That is very important. So first trial, we have to watch for one month or two months whether it works or not. And if that works, we can keep on going. And if it does not work well, we should stringent a little bit more the test and other things. So I think first trial is very important to start up the uh, connections between the two countries. Like pragmatism certainly is the spirit, uh, in a way, for Northeast Asian uh, economies. Uh, Professor Tang, how do you see the 
re-establishment of business traveling uh, between China and Japan as a result of the list visit by the Chinese uh, State Councilor Wang Yi. You know, Japan and China are good trade partners in decades, and uh, this time uh, the resume, resumption of the uh, tourism between the two countries, I'm sure, will give some, you know, a positive impact on the uh, development uh, for trade between the two countries. Also, uh, will enhance the cooperation in fighting against the pandemic this time, you know, after a month of closing of border. I'm sure this time China is willing to uh, you know, open its uh, you know, gates uh, more wider to some countries like Japan because we are neighbors. We should have some uh, cooperation in trade, in uh, fighting against the pandemic, and also uh, we can you know, cooperate in some other areas to enhance the uh, peace and stability in this region and mm. uh, to enhance the the development of uh, economies in the two countries. Miss mm. Lim from South Korea, I know China and South Korea are also thinking about some of these possibilities. How is it going so far? Well, uh, oh, we are very excited to have uh, Mr. Wang Yi uh, today. Uh, from today, he's going to uh, stay a few days uh, here in this country. And uh, we are also uh, probably excited to have some uh, more like a positive outcomes just uh, Japan had uh, with the, uh, the, his visit. Uh, because as you probably remember, a few days ago over the last weekend, uh, G20 APEC were held virtually. And then our president, the president, and Moon Jae-in also, he um, highlighted the importance of resuming the economic activities and uh, having um, a, a kind of exchange uh, or travel of essential personnel, uh, which was actually adapted uh, in the state joint statement of the G20 too. So um, even though we still are suffering from um, the spread of the virus, uh, even in, in the country or in the region, uh, but still, at the same time, uh, we cannot sacrifice all these uh, economic activities um, forever. So um, from, from the probably very pragmatic step, as you just mentioned, uh, we hope, uh, we uh, want to uh, expect uh, more like a positive um, success or mm. positive improvements uh, of the economic activities um, mm. across the border. Mm -hmm. Talking about the economies, uh, certainly everybody has been very impressed by RCEP, which has been agreed upon by economies of uh, ASEAN countries and also uh, China, Japan, South Korea, New Zealand, Australia. This put a new momentum into the discussion mm. about global trade. Having said that though, the three economies uh, in Northeast Asia plays a crucial role in make it happen and in implementing it perfectly. So how do you see the three economies can correlate in this regard when the rest of the world are still uh, tr trying to struggle with the pandemic? Uh, uh, Ms. Lim, would you like to go first? Sure. You know, if we uh, recall our memory before uh, America actually left the TPP, and TPP and RCEP were kind of, you know, in a competitive relation. And then uh, many actually experts or policymakers were uh, interested in uh, watching which one will be concluded uh, <laughs> earlier than the other. Mm. Uh, but as you just said, RCEP was concluded finally, and 15 countries, including ASEAN, and as you just mentioned, three uh, East Asian country it was concluded which is very much i think uh, a cheerful uh, for any uh, economy in this region um, tpp of course us left and now japan is um, of course leading the progress uh, or the the, the dialogues uh, again the president see already showed a, a kind of positive interest in joining the cp tpp too so trade is actually should be regarded, should be um, appreciated more, mm. uh, I think, um, than um, before or than uh, any other thing, because all mm. this economic interdependence is really our reality in this region. Based on that, uh, we can move on further. Again, we can uh, trust more and we can, um, you know, less concerned about um, those security related issues or unnecessary um, escalation of um, any uh, physical 
uh, violence, mm. uh, you know, potentially uh, all this economic interdependence can contribute to the uh, mitigation of the risk. What you said, so really I, I'm again, mm. I'm very, very much optimistic uh, about uh, those multi-level framework uh, for the trade in this region. It's very interesting development, isn't it, Professor Tong? I mean, just think about it. Uh, last year, people were still talking about, you know, uh, uh, the competition and the geopolitics within these mechanisms. But now, mm. you know, China has been talking about, let's, you know, think about joining CPTPP. The Chinese president uh, uh, has been openly talking about it. And now China, Japan, South Korea are all inside this RCEP. And this region has become mm. a leading figure in making the economy revive again globally. So what we are seeing is a really evolving picture. Things are happening very fast, Professor. This is actually a good uh, you know, idea or perception uh, for the Chinese government and for our leaders. They all uh, you know, used to be very cautious in this regard, but now they would like to be more open and to be more active in participating uh, these multilateral you know, uh, mechanisms in trade and in some other uh, corporations. I, I think uh, this is actually a result of the development of globalization of world economy and uh, the new administration, I mean, in the United States, uh, you know, Joe Biden, uh, will, to my understanding, return to uh, some international uh, mechanism, including uh, CPTTP or some other you know, trade mechanism. This will give other aspect of uh, competition between China and the United States. So uh, the attitude change this time by the Chinese leaders is an echo or response to the uh, coming you know, uh, administration in the United States. And uh, I'm sure Joe Biden and uh, his administration will give some you know, uh, very, very you know, active uh, or uh, serious uh, consideration on the uh, multilateral uh, cooperation in trade in a, a specific region. So mm -hmm. China would like to uh, join such uh, development and uh, give uh, very active cooperation okay. with other counterparts in this region. Mm. So, Professor Yoshino, this makes the things much more interesting, isn't it? You know, after the U.S. left the TPP, uh, Japan held high these uh, platform, uh, the flags of it, and uh, make it the CPTPP. Now, there is a possibility that the U.S. might come back. And then also, uh, China's uh, willingness uh, to work with uh, this platform, CPTPP, uh, meanwhile, already working with uh, partners in Northeast Asia on RCEP uh, have made this conversation much more diversified and much more fascinating. Yes, I think uh, Japan, Korea, China has developed exporting our products to US, Europe. But middle income class in Asia is growing and production networks between Japan, Korea, Japan and China has been growing. So I think the bilateral trade, multilateral trade, regional trade in the Asian region can upgrade our economic growth and prosperity. So we are not only relying on US and Europe, but Asian growth can create our uh, mutual networks, including Southeast Asia. So this RCEP will create one more step to grow Asia as one of the economic leader in the world. So I think three coordinations of this RCEP is very important for the growth of Asia, not only our advanced and nations, but also developing nations in South Asia, South Asia will be uh, mitigated and also gained a lot. Mm. So this leadership of three countries will be very important for the success of your Asia in future. Mm. People have been saying there were some traditional concerns about the territories, uh, you know, about uh, the allied relationship with the United States vis-a-vis -vis the U.S.-China geopolitical kinds of possibilities in the region. So how will this uh, relationship in Northeast Asia between China, Japan, South Korea, three huge economies work? And this is a very interesting question, Ms. Lim. You're totally right. We still have the conventional security issues, North Korea's nuclear issue, is still on the table, uh, which didn't probably uh, show enough progress yet. 
So that is definitely um, should be regarded as the, uh, the top priority by all the three party, I think, because as long as North Korea just keep doing so, I mean, we cannot move further because, you know, it always does provide a good justification for anybody to to use for um, its own security purpose. So again, the definitely North Korea's nuclear issue, uh, we definitely need to work on. And uh, non-conventional uh, security issues like global warming, climate change, or all this like a uh, uh, public health issue or even cyber security issues, those things also are the common challenges, I think. So as long as uh, we share common interest in our economic prosperity, I think that we definitely need to um, talk more and try to manualize, institutionalize our rule and the compliance to the rule um, is also, I think, a very important uh, for the uh, more like a sustainable, sustainable mm. development of this region. Mm. Mm. Professor Yoshino, your thoughts? I think three countries together look at same directions, mm. such as climate issues and social security and poverty reduction. And those are very important for all of us mm. and how to mitigate income disparities in each country. And those top topics could be uh, coordinated together and we can discuss much more what kind of policies will be uh, good. Uh, Professor Tang. Uh, in recent years that the United States did play a very active in a row in the uh, in a cooperation among the three countries. I mean, uh, China, Japan, and the South Korea. Number one, uh, the you know, Diao Diao Island dispute. Actually, uh, you know, the years before 2012, uh, China and Japan did have good cooperation, uh, including the trade exchanges, and also uh, they would like to have uh, free uh, currency exchanges at that time before. You know, uh, 2012, but suddenly changed the, the development in, uh, uh, in uh, I think, late 2012, just because of the dispute of Gyoi Island. Why? Because the United States you know, had committed to not an administration that the uh, military treaty between the U.S. and the Japan would, would cut, cover uh, the Gyoi Islands and its islands. Another case is the third, you know, deployment of uh, uh, U.S. Uh, you know, military equipment in South Korea. Actually, in 2015, uh, the then uh, you know uh, president of South Korea gave very you know, active um, uh, support to China's you know uh, development in, in in the free trade zone in Northeast Asia, uh, including the in participation in uh, AIB and. Uh, then suddenly the deployment of that of the United States in uh, South Korea, then the relations between China and uh, South Korea, you know, was deteriorated since then. So I think uh, the United States sometime uh, was uh, a very active player in the uh, cooperation among the three countries in Northeast Asia. So we should be very cautious this time. Uh, we would like to maintain the current momentum uh, and cooperation uh, among the three countries, but we should take the uh, consideration of uh -huh. the uh, influence of the United States in this area. Tang Jianqin, Jin Zhang Lim, now Yuki Yoshino, thank you so much. Everybody has their own perspectives, so certainly they are all welcome to hear. Thank you, really appreciate it.